Unbelievable. You know what we're going to do right now? Seeing as we got the Sun City Palms and everything going on, we're just going to get right to business. Because this next guy, uh, you know, I'm not trying to kiss his ass or anything, but I just really want to get him out here to talk to him. Everywhere you go, people are talking about the upcoming film, Pulp Fiction. Uh, my next guest directed and wrote it. He even acts in it. You can also see him doing all that in my own personal favorite film, Reservoir Dogs. Please welcome Quentin Tarantino! <laughs> Absolutely. It's all film form, all Angelica. Exactly, the quad They're everywhere. There. Man, I hope it's not weird. It, it's, it feel, I feel like a groupie interviewing you and bringing it out here. It's, it's, uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's, it, it, no, it's so cool because like, you know, I was like thinking, well, I've been doing all these talk shows and everything. Well, like, this is the one I'm going to have fun on. Oh, all right, sir. <laughs> Enjoy yourself then. It's just my people. Are your here. people are here. It's just a little something we threw together. So really, just enjoy yourself. Oh, I, I sure appreciate it. Um, I'm loving Pulp Fiction. I think it's great. Are you getting weird reactions from the movie around? Like, uh, you, I know they're doing screenings right now. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. How, how's, how's everything going with that? Oh, it's going great, actually. I mean, one of the things that's really funny is, um, you, know, you know, Reservoir Dogs got this like big thing against it. Big. Oh, it's like so violent. It's the most violent movie ever made. Right. You know? Well, I wouldn't mind making the most violent movie ever made, but I didn't, you know? I mean, it ain't right. that violent, you know? But the thing is, it's like we were thinking, well, this is going to be the case again on, on, on Pulp Fiction and stuff, but everyone's like saying, man, this movie's so funny. It's, it's so really funny. funny. Well, Reservoir Dogs is pretty funny, too. You may, you didn't get it, all right? Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but it was funny, too. But, like, but now the humor's a little bit more out front and everything, and so, like, as opposed to, like, having to defend violence, which I'm not good at defending because it's uh, defended. Right. All right. It's like they, you know, people are like interviewers and stuff. They're saying, "So you made a comedy this time, huh?" Oh, uh, yeah. you don't like that, do you? All right, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> made a comedy this time. Sure, look down on the thing. I heard something wild happen though. Like uh, uh, people are giving it like uh, two thumbs up, four thumbs up, all that kind of stuff. But I heard one two guy in a two, two, two separate thumbs up. Um, one guy in a screening though had an amazing reaction to it. What, what happened there? Well, it was at the the opening of the New York Film Festival. The whole right. big. Lincoln Center crowd, you know, I was like, Very oh, foo -foo. Well, yeah, I know, I was actually kind of nervous about that screening, because that's not really people going to see the movie, it's like the governor's ball, you know, so right. all of New York society was going out there to Lincoln Center, and then like this like big intense scene happens in the movie, and like, right after it was over, all of a sudden there's like, please, turn the lights on, for God's sake, stop the film, this man is dying, you know, and, yeah, I was like, oh what God. is this, this is Harvey Weinstein doing a William Castle or something, it's like all of a sudden we were watching The Tingler. <laughs> oh, The Tingler, right. Yeah. And, and what was the situation? The guy had had some, I don't know, some aller a reaction to something, allergic reaction to food he had before, or a bad clam, I don't know what it and was. And just passed yeah. out. And just started like, you know, just started, you know, just started going, <laughs> you know, during the movie. Yeah. You know? You know what I'm sure it was? They turned the lights on and everything. And the supersized milk duds. Yes, that, that, that was it. Well, he didn't have like a holder for his cup, <laughs> exactly, you know, at uh, the Lincoln out. Center. But it was so funny because like, like Harvey Weinstein, the head of Merrimax, goes down there and everything. And people were thinking maybe Harvey Weinstein set this up as like a like big publicity stunt. But I know this is not the kind of publicity that Harvey wanted. So I had this I like imagine. Francis Ford Coppola in Heart of Darkness thing. Look, this man is not dead until I say he's dead. All right, you know, you know, he's dead. Get him out the back. And it's, it's just an abscess tooth, people. No problem. You know, just get him out of here. I can imagine you could talk your way out of anything. That guy's head could have blown up, and you could have been out there. It's okay. Oh, it's, fine. It's, it's okay. Fine. It's, it's fine. We'll be starting the movie again. Exactly where it stopped. Right, but it, th things are going real well. When we come back, I want to get to uh, Pulp Fiction. I want to get to the clip and all that other stuff, and talk about some okay. other movies. I got one thing to say. Please. Margaret Cho rocks. There you have it, people. From the man himself. Margaret Cho rocks. We gotta take a commercial it's break. Stereo. We're gonna be Ma back with Quentin One, Tarantino. Two, three. Margaret, Margaret Cho, Cho rocks. rocks. Very nicely done. <laughs> Good work. Shaking it. Ladies, good work, good work. I'm like wearing your school colors. I know, yeah, you guys I, feel, got... I feel like I'm like the effeminate guy that leads the cheerleaders, you know, in the big <laughs> floppy sweater. You know? With the megaphone. Go <laughs> team! Yes, exactly. All right, set up Pulp Fiction for us. Okay. Give us a quick uh, little run, run down so we can get to the clip of it. Basically what the deal is, it's a, it's a crime film that takes place in Hollywood, not the industry, the town. Right. And it's, uh, it, it involves this, this whole 
group of motley characters, all right? And there's like three separate stories in the movie, but the same characters float in and out of each story. So right. by the end of the movie, you don't feel like you've seen three stories. You feel like you've seen like one right. story the about a community of it I thought was characters. really well done. It wasn't, right. I didn't think it was contrived at all. It was really well done. And this is a scene, uh, it's uh, Travolta, and This is Tra Samuel Jackson. Travolta and Sam Jackson, just kind of like they're on their way to like blow away a couple of guys. Uh, so they're just having like the normal like conversations you might have on the way to work. On your way to blowing yeah. away a couple of guys. Here it is from Pulp Fiction. You know what they call a, a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? I mean, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it uh, Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. And Le Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call a Whopper? I don't know. I didn't go on a Burger King. <laughs> That's the part that I love. <laughs> well, I don't know what the f was going on with that clip, but right. yeah. <laughs> we had to drop out every now and again. Right, exactly. Is that the stuff that's really important to you? Like these these mundane conversations that hitmen do. Are these conversations that you have with people? Oh yeah. Well, I th the thing is, I think that's what everybody talks about more or less. Uh, you know, it's like. Uh, you know, you never talk about Brand X. You always like, you know, say, man, if I had some lava, I could really wash my hands and get right. this stuff off. You know, or like, you know, when people, I mean, you know, people say, oh, you talk about pop culture all the time. Well, it's a shared language. Right. That we all have, you know, and like, like for instance, like when you know, you go to the movies over the weekend, when you come back into work on Monday morning, you talk about what you saw. Right. All right. You see a, sh you know, you watch the John Stewart show. Really? You know, on, on on Wednesday night, and you come into the work the next day, and you go, man, that's John Stewart, man, he's rad. Quentin, I think I'm falling for you. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. It is, but what, what amazes me is you take that. That's what breaks the tension in your movies because you have these really intense moments broken by a great conversation about well, a Big not, Mac. Yeah, well, they're not just gangster guys talking a bunch of gangster, yeah, yeah, sure, Louie, bring him in the back. You know, you know <laughs> I, uh, it's not that stuff, you know. It's like they're like, hey, my wife is coming home and you can't bring him in the back because she's going to divorce me. Right. You know? That was you acting in the film as well. You, you have a nice role. Did you sleep with the director? Did, yeah, well, uh, I, yes, I, uh, I gave him a job. <laughs> 31 years of it. <laughs> would you, would you just, um, excuse me one second. Did you guys pick any of that up? <laughs> I don't want any lawsuits. That's all, that's all I'm talking about. What about who, if you were going to be in a movie by another director, uh -huh. who, would, who would it be? Ooh la la. Ooh la la. Really? Uh, yeah, very good question. <laughs> one. <laughs> John Stewart, one. <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. Who would it be? Actually, of living directors right now. Yeah. Uh, or dead. Okay. Well, dead directors, I'd be digging on being in a Sergio Leone movie. Sergio Leone. That would be cool. No, I don't, I don't even know that guy. You know Sergio Leone? No. Fistful I know Sergio of... Valenti, but no, he no, didn't no, direct no. any. No, Fistful of Dollars, The Good, oh, The Bad, oh. The Ugly, okay, great, Once yeah. Upon a Time in the West, Once Upon a Time in America. That's Sergio Leone. That's yeah. Sergio Leone. Yes. That guy. Oh, that guy. Oh, you know, I stupid. always forget him and Richard Donner. I, I, they don't sound alike, but I get them But confused. it's a different thing. <laughs> yeah. Let's say I was going to be in one of your movies. Let's say, uh, let's say Reservoir Dogs. Right, let's okay. say I'm lucky enough to get in there. Who am I? <laughs> pink, to get in pink there. purple, brown. <laughs> Mr. Aqua Green. No, 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 no. I'm joking. I would actually, let me see. If I was going to cast you in. I would cast you as Mr. Blonde. I'd be Mr. Blonde. You would oh, be Mr. Blonde, man. I appreciate can you, that. Can you do, can you do the, 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 the stuck in the middle with you dance? Oh, man. You've seen that the movie. The most, you said you've, you've seen yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I can do, do it. I can do this part. Yeah. Yeah. Or he's just going like this. One, two. Well, I don't mm -hmm. know what I came here tonight. <laughs> I got the feeling that somebody ain't right. And then he jumps off and gets his ear. <laughs> and he takes his ear off. That was my favorite scene. That's I my favorite never, scene, too. That's a scene that. I can never hear that song again without just going, Well, see, Duh. <laughs> well, see that's the mark of using a song right in right. a movie. You know, it's like you should make it so like, you, I, mean, I, don't know the song, I don't know if Jerry Rafferty appreciates it that much. <laughs> you know, but uh, that you should always like kind of see Michael kind of just doing his little dance in there. It's like, I mean, it's like funny. I remember like, um, uh, in the movie Dirty Dancing, they used the Ronettes, like, Be My Baby. Right. And then they're like, oh, what the hell are they? That's, that's the opening theme to Mean Streets. Right. That's like Mean Streets song. How can they use that? And yet the final scene of that movie, very moving. Oh, yes, it, very much so. You know, when it lifts her in the air, you really it, like, right it, it brought ice castles back to me it like really that, did. man. <laughs> that's true. I had a Lynn Holly thing. Um, recommend, like, uh, one very quickly, just a great director, sort of obscure, that you think we should all be writing as movies and, and Ooh, doing that stuff. Oh, 
and you keep coming ah, with these I got good a million of them. questions. Uh, well, actually, let me see. Uh, well, some films that I dig on that I think people should de definitely watch is one, I'm a big Pam Greer fan. Right. All right, I'm a big, big Pam Greer fan. I mean, sure. she's like the queen of all women. All super right. bad. Super bad. Super <laughs> bad. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> Fox, Fox, super. Well, uh, uh, this director, Jack Hill, all right, did both uh, Coffee and Foxy Brown. Right. They're, they're great movies. They're, they're absolutely fantastic. The movie Rolling Thunder, all right, starring William Devane and Tommy Lee Jones, all, all right. right, that is, I think, one of the greatest action films of all time. It's the greatest combination of action film and character study I've ever seen. All right, great. And that's a high recommendation coming from you. Those are the top of the Quentin Tarantino list. That then. would be top, tip, top, tip, top. Tremendous. Yeah. Quentin, thank you very much hey, for man. coming by. Thanks really a lot. Really pleasure. Pulp Fiction opens across the country October 14th. Coming up, Cynthia Gibb, Johnny Legend, Mighty Mighty Boss Stone. Stick around. <laughs>